Okay, folks, here's another Chapter 9 homework problem, and here goes. We have a window washing rig, and we have a window washer that is standing on a scaffolding. There is a rope on both ends, and these are two separate ropes, so I'm going to call this one Tension 1, and I'm going to call this one Tension 2. The entire scaffolding is 3 meters long, so it's 3 meters from one end to the other, and the entire rig weighs 200 newtons, so I'm going to put one downward force vector right in the geometric center with a weight of 200 newtons that goes right there. Uh, we have a window washer that weighs 700 newtons, and this window washer is standing right there. We'll give him a fancy hat, um, and this person is one meter from the left end. The question is, what is the tension in each rope? Now, in order to do this, we know that this is a static situation. So a static situation, the sum of the forces have to all equal zero, but also the sum of the torques also have to equal zero. Now, this is a situation that is not designed to rotate. There is not a natural point of pivot, so we have to choose a pivot. We're going to choose the pivot. You can choose it anywhere you want. If you have two unknowns, we have two unknowns, T1, T2, the left and the right tension, um, it's highly recommended that you put your fulcrum underneath one of your unknowns because mathematically it's going to fall out of the equation as you go along. So I'm going to do it on the left end. Why? Because, I don't know, it's on the left and it's the first one I come to. No big logic there. So I'm going to put my fulcrum there. But you could put it on the right. You could put it in the geometric center. You could put it any old spot along that, that rod. All right, the big idea we're working on here is this. The sum of the torques that are going to make this whole system rotate downward are going to be equivalent to the sum of the torques that are going to make the whole system pivot upward. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if you look at this, if this is my, if this is my fulcrum, this torque, oops, I forgot the weight of my window washer. My window washer weighs 700 newtons, so he's going to apply a force, or she's going to apply a force at some distance from the pivot. So this is going to pr produce a torque making the whole system pivot this direction. The weight of the rake is going to make the whole system pivot in that direction. So those are going to pivot downward, if you call this the point of pivot. Um, instead of downward, you may prefer to call this clockwise, and that is absolutely fine. Um, actually, that's probably more convention than downward or upward. Uh, T2, the tension up here, this tension is going to make the whole system rotate upward in that direction. Now, you may call that counterclockwise. Um, and a lot of textbooks, actually by convention, counterclockwise is very often considered positive torque, and a clockwise torque, these clockwise torques, are considered negative torques. That is just by convention of physics how it's typically done. All right, we're going to create a static situation, so the clockwise and counterclockwise torques should equal each other in order to have a static situation. So every time you have a torque, it is a, as you know, torque is force times lever arm. So here goes. As I go from the fulcrum down across my lever arm, first thing I come to is my window washer. The force is 700 newtons, and the distance to the fulcrum is 1 meter. The next thing producing a torque is going to be the, the center of mass of the window washing rig. So this is 200 newtons. The distance to the fulcrum, well, the entire rig is 3 meters long, and this is going to be in the geometric center, so this is 1.5 meters, is going to equal T2, and T2 is located 3 meters from the end. So let's do this. This is going to be 700 newton meters. 1 and a half times 200 is going to be 300 newton meters. You add those together, this is going to be 1,000 newton meters will be equal to T2 plus, excuse me, times 3 meters. So what will T2 be equivalent to? T2 will be equivalent to 1,000 newton meters divided by 3 meters. Meters are going to cancel and T2 is going to be equivalent to 333 newtons. That's the tension in bar 2. 
uh, excuse me, in rope two. Now, how in the world do we find the tension in rope one? Well, then we go back to find the tension in rope one, then we go back to Sir Isaac Newton. In order for things to be stable, the forces have to equal zero, and the forces up have to equal the forces down. So the two up forces are going to be T1 plus T2. My two down forces are going to be the weight of the person plus the weight of the window washing rig, which I think was 200 newtons. Um, T1 is my unknown. T2 is 333 newtons, is going to equal 900 newtons. So T1 is going to be equivalent to 900 newtons minus 333, or 567 newtons. And that is T1. All right, let's go onward and do the next problem. Phineas, great name, Phineas. Phineas wants to find his center of mass by lying on a uniform wooden board that is supported by two bathroom type scales. Um, Phineas has a weight of 185 pounds. He put his head on one end of a 2.2 meter long board that weighs 25 pounds. The scale at his feet weighs 79 pounds. How far down from the top of his head does is Phineas's CG? So here's the, the setup. So here we have a board. We have two bathroom scales. Bathroom scale under both ends. Yep. Okay, Phineas is laying on the board, and here he is. Um, he has a, puts his head on one end of a 2.2 meter long board. So the board itself is 2.20 meters from one end to the other end, and the board itself weighs 25 pounds. So right in the geometric center, there's going to be a down force vector of 25 pounds for his weight. The scale at his feet reads 79 pounds. Now this is kind of wacky. The scale reads 79 pounds. This is the amount of weight that's supported by the this scale down on the feet end. Both scales together are supporting Phineas and the board, but the weight is not evenly distributed because he's laying towards one end. He's not magically perfectly balanced in the middle. So there is an up normal force. There is a force normal upward on this end of 79 pounds. Okay. Um, he weighs 185 pounds. So in the middle of his CG, he has a force vector down of 185 pounds. And the question is this, where is his center of gravity? Well, if we set this experiment up well, this is how this should work. If we put the fulcrum here, again, we have a situation that is not designed to pivot. It, pivot. it is a static situation. The sum of the forces should all equal zero, and the sum of the torques should all equal zero. We can put our fulcrum anywhere we want it, but if we set this situation up carefully, we put the fulcrum under Phineas's head, here's what we can do. We can then say the sum of the torques that are making the whole system rotate downward or clockwise are going clockwise are going to be equivalent to the sum of the torques that are going to make the whole system rotate upward or counterclockwise. So let's identify those torques. This weight is going to pull down. That's going to be a clockwise torque. The weight of the board is a, going to provide a clockwise torque because we're pivoting around our mathematical fulcrum. It's not a real fulcrum. It's a mathematical point we added to the situation. And the normal force, if you can mentally imagine picking this board up and lifting it from this end, this normal force is making it rotate that direction, and that is going to be a counterclockwise or an upward torque, and those are going to go in that direction. So now we're going to be ready to create our mathematical equation. So let's go forth and do that. So we're going to have the force of the person named Phineas, and that is his weight, times his lever arm, the distance from top of his head down to his CG, plus 
the force or weight of the board, the board he's laying on, times its lever arm. So this is the force of the board and the lever arm of the board, which is the distance from the pivot to where that is located. That's going to be the lever arm of the board. Those are my torques making it rotate in one direction. That's going to be equal to the torque making it rotate in the other direction, which is the force as read on the scale on his feet. So I'm going to call this the force of the scale and the lever arm down to that scale. The force of the person is an 885 pounds. The lever arm of the person, we don't know. We want to know where his CG is on his body. The force of the board, well, we're told the board weighs 25 pounds. And the center of mass of that board is going to be at the geometric center. If the whole thing is 2.2 meters long. That means that's going to be 1.1 meters long. The force of the scale, the base, base end of the scale, is 79 pounds. And what is the lever arm from the scale to the pivot? Well, that's going to be the entire length of the board, 2.20 meters. And now it is a simple mathematical operation. We're going to have 185 pounds times the lever arm of our person, plus this is going to be 27.5 um, pound meters is going to equal 174 pound meters. Okay, we want to get these all on the same side, so I'm going to subtract 27.5 from each side. They've got the same units. I can go ahead and do that. So I'm going to end up with 185 pounds times the lever arm of the person will equal 146 pound meters. That's a 6. In order to solve for lever arm of the person, divide both sides by 185 pounds. 185 pounds. And when I do the math, the lever arm of the person, I get 0 0.79 meters. Now what does that mean? That means if I stand this person up and I measure from the top of his head down 0.79 meters, where this happens, that is that person's CG in the up and down plane. Pretty cool little experiment.